Uh, Shanti, I'll ask this question to you. When we see the, any show on DVD, there are always the extras which show the deleted scenes. So films that have been see, uh, scenes that have been filmed. Have you ever seen any of your best scenes end up on the cutting room floor? Well, there's one, uh, there's one scene in, I think it's the second movie, where we shoot, it's called Und Blood, Bad Blood or something. Bad or Blood. Evil Blood or whatever. And there's a scene where I... <coughs> Uh, my son is buying drugs or something and I catch him and I chase him out through a building and at the same time they were shooting a historic drama there in the, with like horse <laughs> wagon and like a Robin Hood story so while we're shooting this and I'm saying like, yeah, yeah fuck you go off and then I turn around then this horse carriage is coming <laughs> <laughs> and I said taxi please and I jumped into the horse carriage and we went away and, but they didn't that within the that's actually you, me you mentioned your son that's quite interesting because we think I thought when we're watching that we're going to see more of your problem son but then we don't see him again much do we the son where the relationships are broken down and there could have been more of the son is there more in the books Jan um, yes a little bit more but uh, it basically it's bad blood that it is about a lot about father and son relationships in different ways in very complicated ways so it was mainly in bad blood that uh, he plays a vital part um, but it's always uh, it later on much much later on in the series uh, in the book series uh, he actually, uh, the son, wants to be a police officer, uh, which is a sh bit of a shock for Bolya. <laughs> he hates the idea. So uh, I guess he turns into people as well. Right. Yeah. So now what we know in Britain, because we all love Borgen, we all love the killing, we all love the bridge, but it's really the Danish acting pool that we know, not the Swedish acting pool. And here's the Swedish acting pool. So are you guys appearing in things that we don't see over here, like... Uh, comedies, class. Yeah. Uh, you mean on uh, on the screen? On, on, yeah, on, t on screen or TV. Yes, of course, loads of it. Uh, very bad stuff. It's you bad. Know. Yeah, really bad. Don't we want oh. to see it then? No, no, you won't. <laughs> don't want to see it. Uh, there's only the best thing comes to Britain, I'm sure. <laughs> this is actually something Hawk and Nessa always says. We only see the good stuff over here. We don't see the crap. No. So we do see the good stuff over here. Yeah, uh, I hope it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, Matthias, have you done any comedy work, or have you only played tricky characters? I done, yeah, yeah, she has I've done one. I want that one comedy I've done. Yeah, uh, five, six years back. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a lot wait, of. Wait, wait, there's another one. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did, uh, yeah she. I, I've done a couple of movies myself now, so uh, yeah, one that I forgot. Yeah, that's that's also a comedy. I don't know how funny it is though, but <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a comedy, yeah. But there's quite a lot of comedy in your relationship with Gunnar. But Come again? A, a relationship with the, the two of you guys. Uh, Magnus and me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that is very funny, those scenes you guys have together. Yeah, I, 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 I really enjoy them, and, and that was uh, most of our scenes we had together, and that, which was very lucky for us because we were friends in real life, which facilitates things of course you know when we see Matthias we see that he's actually quite solidly built yeah, but because yeah, but he always looks quite short alongside <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say you know luckily people in Sweden see me in other movies when people are smaller than me like he's quite big you know <laughs> walking around with Magnus everybody's a dwarf you know what I mean <laughs> so how easy it for you for you guys like Marlene to walk down the street in Sweden are you now just to fans stop you Sometimes, yes, but it's mostly nice people. I okay. haven't <laughs> like the people in this room. Yes, like <laughs> people in this room. But in Sweden, everybody's very humble and nobody. The thing you can see is like some people maybe like watching very and like, maybe I know her. And some people are like, hi. And I'm like, hi. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's, no, it's not a problem. Yeah. So of the actors on this stage, only one actor has been directed by Ingmar Bergman. She's not on this stage. Irene Lindt has been directed by Bergman. Would you like to have been directed by him? You were not directed by Bergman, were you? Uh, no, I, I actually imitated him. Oh, really? <laughs> that must have gone down well. alive, so... <laughs> uh, therefore, I'm, I'm not worked with him. So. <laughs> but I, I think the imitation was quite okay, so... 
Uh, he didn't think it was <laughs> good. Yeah, well. So here's the question that some people have asked me here. What do you think? Let's start with, with you, Magnus. What do you think of the British TV shows? Like, have you been watching things like Sherlock? Uh, to be honest, I haven't wat watched that much films and TV uh, during the years I was competing and traveling in the world all the time. But um, I think most a lot of Br British crime, uh, it's, I think they have a big audience in Sweden and, and I think the Swedish crime series is, they are, of course they are different but they are also a lot, very similar in many ways so I think uh, there is a reason why we like them in Sweden. Right. I'm told that Midsummer Murders is incredibly popular in Denmark. And in Sweden. And in Sweden as well. <laughs> Do you think when you see those shows, oh, this is what Britain is really like? <laughs> <laughs> what if I say The Wire? The Wire. Well. I love The Wire. Now we're talking. <laughs> Before I was supposed That's to... That's American. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're kidding me. It is? <gasps> oh my God, yeah, I know. We but don't mind her praising the wire, do we? I mean, come on. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> but anyhow, yeah, thank you, thank you for me. <laughs> it was still a good answer, Molly. But that's an interesting distinction because shows like The Wire and the Scandinavian shows seem to be tougher and more edgy. British shows, generally speaking, don't you think, Jana, seem cosier? Is that a third? Okay, uh, yes. <laughs> there are, of course, exceptions, but... Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, about the influence, yes, uh, one of my early influences were Prime Suspect, the one with Jane Tennyson, which I think... Few fans out here. <laughs> that's really, really uh, Helen Mirren that sort of yeah. set, set a standard for... for uh, but Shirsten Home is nothing like Jane Tennyson, is she, as a character? No, no, it's not imitation, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course you don't. Now, Shanti, uh, a famous remark that Hitchcock made was that actors, well, he, he was accused of saying actors are cattle. And what he said in his defense was, I just said actors should be treated like cattle. <laughs> are your directors very respectful to you, or do they, uh, do they ask for your advice about the way the part should be played? Or do they tell you, do it? No, when you do uh, like a TV series like this, the actors actually uh, know more than the directors who come in, so, so then you have quite a lot of discussions. Probably not if you do a feature film, the director has more personal, stronger... So, Matthias, when you've done films, have you found yourself just being told what to do in a very straightforward way, or has it been an interaction with the director? Uh, I co-produced them. That's, uh -huh. well, that's an advantage. I think that answers the question. <laughs> no, but yeah, so nobody argues yeah. with you. If you work in the States, uh, usually you just, you know, Don't discuss, discuss the things too much and, you know, don't be a problem for the production because they have a fa faster pace and, a, you know, um, a bigger budget and, you know, they're, they're accustomed to do the stuff in the American way, like you sit down and listen and so you do. But when you do movies in Sweden, Sweden is a small country, so usually you know people pretty well and, and uh, things turn out better when you discuss things on, in a group and, like, for example, John is a very accomplished and big author and still I know him. We have a personal relationship, so it helps out being from a small country. We do shit together, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a co-producer, were you saying to the director, I'd like a close-up here, please? I wouldn't go that far, but maybe... Uh, <laughs> but if, if you're in a production and, and you do a, a sequel or, or even a, a third part, then, you know, you have a relationship for a long time and, you know, you've been spending time for maybe four or five years together. So, so uh, hopefully you have more or less the same notion of what you want to do. And, but if you do a feature film, yes. If it's only one movie, yes. The director is the boss and the actors have to, you know, oblige that fact. Well, it's interesting. When I got these crib, crib notes from Jan early, he talked about you, Klaus, and said, highly respected theatre actor which I'm sure you are. We haven't seen you yet, but will we see you on the West End stage? Uh, uh, well, actually, um, uh, there is a Swedish actor working. I don't know if he's working here still now. Christa Henriksson. Henriksson, yes. Christa Henriksson. He's just done a, a play. Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, His well, producer's in the audience, I think. Uh, I can say I'd love, to, I'd love to play in the West End theatre. Now, would you be confident to do it in English? Has he insisted in the end on doing it in Swedish with subtitles? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be, 
that is the question. But it we is no in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of our outrageous fortune who take arms against the sea of trouble and by opposing. We everybody. want to see his Hamlet, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I know there are people here from Arrow Films, and this is really the whole thing is an Arrow Films gig. I've got one uh, beef with them about the way they are selling on Nidal, or at least it might not be their fault. It says on the trailer, blood drenched. It can be quite violent, but it's not that violent, is it? Yeah. Oh, you think it is? Somebody thinks it's violent in the audience? It's got violent parts in it, but uh, I, I think they're all quite uh, well motivated. There is a reason for the violence. Right. Yep. At that point, let's throw things open to the audience. Now, I can't see you, so I've just got to hope that I can see the hands. Any questions? There we are, front row. When is the next series? <laughs> uh, we, we can say there are discussions, uh, and uh, uh, perhaps we start shooting next spring, but it's not decided yet. But uh, we all hope uh, that uh, that will be. Yeah. So, are all the books going to get filmed, Jan? Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, I've just signed contracts for the following series after the ten books as well, which is a more European one, but with these characters right. still around. Okay. So uh, it's the hope uh, and aspiration that the next one will be uh, a success, and then we can perhaps make a sort of international uh, thing with a continuation. Okay. I saw a question over here with the gentleman in the white shirt there, yes. I'm going to repeat that if you didn't hear that. Will Jan change the characters having seen them on TV the way he writes them? Um, the strange thing is that almost all these characters are very much like the one I once I saw in my head 15 years ago when I created them. But, of course, it's going to be very hard to write about Gunnar Nyberg in the future without seeing Magnus <laughs> <laughs> before me. So, uh, But uh, in general, I think... Uh, you probably live in two parallel universes, really. One is a literary universe, and in that universe they look like they have always looked in my head. And, and then we have this second universe where these people are doing a fabulous job with them, but it's still two different worlds. Really. But in fact, that question is a good one, because the TV series in this country, Morse, the books changed because of the TV series. Colin Dexter wrote them in a different way. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's possible that I've been doing that for some time now, but <laughs> you, you never know. Another question. So the question was, how long before all the other Arnadal appear in Britain? Yes, it's, the chronology has been a bit strange here because you, you sort of got the TV series uh, before the books, really. Uh, um, it's taken some time to get translated into English. Uh, when I started writing, there was no interest in, in from, from the English-speaking countries. And when the interest came, uh, it, it sort of, uh, yeah, well, it, it's a long story, but it's taken some time. Now it's going much, much faster. So uh, there are two books now, and I think next year there will be two more. So uh, it will speed up. Okay. Now we've got, possibly for the first and last time, the cast of Arnidol on the stage. So questions for them, please, anybody? Right at the back. How necessary is it for Swedish actors to be multilingual? Very. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, we, we speak Swedish <laughs> in Sweden, and uh, so we all only need that language. No, but in fact, you're right that this show... But of course, it's very good it. to, to speak several languages <laughs> if you are an actor, because then you can, I mean, you can come here and do some movies. 
I, yeah. c can you think of another Scandinavian show which has so much English spoken in it as Arne Dahl? There is a lot of English. So how do you feel when, you, when you're given your, your English lines? Are you happy about that with your very good English class? Uh, I try, you know, to sound British. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, you know, when, when I draw my lines, I think uh, perhaps someone will hear this and... Uh, and uh, perhaps I will work in West End. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another question, front row. Um, yeah, one, one of the appealing things about um, your books and the characters and the fact that as the series rolls on, you get more and more attached to them to the extent that I always have withdrawal symptoms kind of after a certain period of time because I now want to know what's going to happen next. And is that the same for you as That's quite a difficult one to synopsize. Mm. Withdrawal symptoms you talked about when you stop playing the parts. Uh, do the parts, how about the parts taking over them? Is that, will that do as a version of your question? Yeah, Other than that, I'll have to give you the mic. <laughs> I guess it's, so does it change how you approach it when you're building a character over a long period of time? Okay, that's it. So, uh, Shant, uh, well, Shanti, who hasn't spoken for a while, it does, is it easy when you're building a <laughs> Don't you be tweeting this. We saw that. <laughs> We're paying attention. I was actually thinking about the question. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> so, Shanti, is it, is it easier over a long period of time to build up a character as episode follows episode? Uh, yeah, it's easier because, I mean, you're, I mean, you're into the character, but you also... Uh, in a show like this where there's very ma uh, where there's many uh, main characters, you, you sometimes feel that probably the problems your character is working with needs a bit more space and you probably want to have some more scenes with that. But, but that's the discussion. With that. yeah. Isn't it important also for you as actors that what you're doing when you're looking at another actor in the scene is just as important if you're just listening, which all of you guys do really well. They're really good listening actors. When the scene is really the other actor's scene, it's just as important. The well, we actually shot you know, all the scenes in the police station in there. Uh, room, we had two cameras going all the time, and one uh -huh. camera you didn't know what was doing, he was free. So you knew that you were always right, it could happen that so you, you couldn't were, stop acting, so you couldn't <laughs> relax. Okay, so another, another question, uh, gentleman, black seat, suit there. Oh, yes, we had to talk about the cleaner. How could we not talk about the cleaner? <laughs> Okay, so we'll have, how did you get the idea for the slightly supernatural cleaner and is he appearing in the second series? Um, uh, two very different, difficult questions. Uh, the cleaner is actually a sort of, of a compilation of the stuff that couldn't fit from the book to the film. The, a certain sense of mystery, a certain sense of of humor as well, uh, uh, so uh, he was sort of created it together with a with a screenplay writers. Uh, so he was sort of supposed to c collect all the stuff in the books that really couldn't fit into the series uh, in some strange, mysterious way, which is uh, which turned him into a, a, a bit of a magician like. Uh, clown-ish guy with a lot of wisdom, which I thought was brilliant. Am I the only person in the audience who doesn't like it when he does something too supernatural? I want something that could be a magician's trick, but I don't want to see a blackboard <laughs> wiped the other way. No, it doesn't I have agree. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Another question. Okay, can't see you, but go ahead. So, uh, do you guys feel that you're playing a crime thriller or a political thriller? Cause both. Are, both. I think. Because John is really writing, um, he really writes about the 
society and what's going on. And of course, it's very hard to not being political, but you don't have to m make a statement, but you can talk about it and not choose what you want to. One more time, H uh, and, and higher, please. Exactly. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing to be to entertain, of course. But do you think about that, Jan, when you're doing them? Do you think that you're making statements about social democracy in, in your country? Or is that just in the background for you? No, it, it's more in the foreground than perhaps it is in the TV series. Uh, um, a, a lot of it has been transformed for, uh, and very well. Uh, but there is more to it in the books. So if you, I mean, the books uh, sort of deepen what you have seen on, on TV. That's it. And uh, that's part of it. So it's perhaps more political in a way, but it's, uh, but you can never lose the thrill or the excitement. Uh, that's the main thing uh, after all. Uh, yeah. What we haven't talked about, because there's the gender roles in that show. So everything changed s quite significantly when you have a female w a cop in charge. And your character is a very interesting one because she's pretty vulnerable, but she's also very capable. So that's unusual. Yeah. She is not Sarah Lund. No, thank she, you, Jan. <laughs> you made an amazing job, really. So how tricky is it for guys like um, the actors on this stage? You have to be told what to do by a female cop. And do you think your characters would be, Magnus, in your case, say, macho, too macho to, to be told where to go? And, She's very peremptory when she tells you what to do. Well, I never thought of it that way. I mean, uh, a person is a person regardless if your bench is 300 or 50 kilos. Does it really matter, does it? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I never thought about that at all. I just, uh, I mean, what I did, I just read, read all the books first. So I have a, an opinion about how this character I'm supposed to play is. And then I just trying to, you know, be as true to it as I can, and then mm -hmm. have, uh, having a, a woman as a, as a boss, that's quite common in Sweden. Okay, a couple more questions from over there, because I can't see you at all. Lady there with a the scarf. Hello, so when you first came to Sweden, as a group of actors, were you as suspicious of each other as your characters were? And did you bond as quickly as they were? So everybody get that? Yeah. yeah. Were you suspicious of your... No, I think, actually, we bonded very fast. Uh, there was a very long sort of period of casting. And uh, when this group sort of was crystallized, uh, uh, in a very, very strange way, sort of when, when we met each other, very, very soon we, we felt, my God, it's us, you know? It, we really felt together. Uh, that's uh, at, at least what I think. <laughs> Anybody care to disagree with that? Yeah. <laughs> no. Another question. Another one over there. Okay, let me repeat that for the audience. So has Marlin been offered other roles outside of Scandinavia in which gender, as you say, is less an issue? The, the battles, to some degree, are won in Sweden. So it's not an issue, which it still is in this country. And those questions are asked. <laughs> First of all, have you been offered roles outside Scandinavia? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Um, okay, um, this uh, this part is uh, the most uh, complex part I've been offered. Outside 
of Scandinavia, I've been asked to do, yeah, a soldier. That's kind of strong, yeah, <laughs> and um, um, yeah, but not, not as this part, no, no. In Sweden, it's, it's very interesting, yeah, I, I think so. They're really up to it and really into it, the feminism part of, yeah, culture. Okay, we've got time for a couple more questions. Gentlemen there. You all heard that. Do all Swedish actors insist on doing a sex scene? Yeah. Actually, we should, we should ask Shanti that, as he's just been a nymphomaniac. <laughs> I have two things I don't do. I won't be naked and I don't dance. <laughs> I'd like to see him dance. <laughs> this man over here in the dark, he's been uh, with his hand up for okay. two hours now. Okay, gentlemen over there. I'll catch up. <laughs> uh, I'm a, <coughs> I'll take all the sailor parts now. <laughs> <laughs> the captains. <laughs> yes, there's only one non-bearded member of the cast on stage. Yes, I know. <laughs> one more question, please. At the back there, with glasses. So does she get to normal act, but don't seem to like the job much at the start. Why is that? No, uh, I, I tried sort of uh, to Viggo uh, Nolander uh, working at this desk for so many decades. Um, uh, so I, sort of, I thought he was really grumpy, you know, and he didn't like Sirius Death. <laughs> he uh, had uh, all these bright ideas, uh, crazy ideas, Viggo Nolander thing, and then in the end, Sirius Death is right. So he's even more grumpy, and then, <laughs> and uh, after a while, they realize they are friends, and uh, I, I think th that is what happens in in real life as well. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Okay. One final question, Gen gentlemen. Is there a lady there? I can't see you. Yes, with the glasses. Good question. So, in fact, because you're all cops from different backgrounds, how could a police advisor help you all out? We had, we had, we had an, uh, some some training with uh, actual police officers, and uh, it was interesting, like shooting course and stuff like that. But mainly, even though when you see the show, it might you know look like an action show, well, with some scenes, it's more about relationships. They happen to be cops, but. Uh, Jan's story, as he said himself, is more, it's about society, so it could be anything. Should, I mean, like, it, there could be politicians or working in a normal office. They're just human beings that happen to be cops, so we didn't need much cop training, even though we had some, but not much, some. Haven't you, Jan, you've presumably done all the work beforehand. You've spoken to police officers. Yeah, when I started uh, writing uh, the books, uh, I did a lot of research uh, and I tried to understand how police officers think and how they work together and a little bit about how they speak and interact with each other. So uh, I think, uh, I, I know nowadays I have a lot of police officers as readers, which is a, a good sign, I think. Definitely. <laughs> Well, I think everybody in this room is going to want to see all ten books filmed, right? Yes. You agree? So, you know they're signing in different places, but can I ask you to thank Arnie Dahl and the cast of Arnie Dahl. <laughs>